Hi, hello, how are you? I have missed you and I'm sorry I haven't been um, making a video for you until now. Um, I have been a little bit busy, but um, I knew I had to make a little bit of time to share something with you. Hopefully this will make up for it. What I wanted to talk to you about today is um, introductions on cold calls. And the reason I'm doing this is because there are so many bad introductions or bad first lines or introductory lines on cold calls that I get as a recipient of cold callers. Now, we've all had a cold call, I'm sure, at one point or another. And the best thing about being a recipient of a cold call is that it helps you to analyze what was good and what was bad about that last caller. Why did you engage with them and why didn't you engage with them? And this is a subject that I want to explore today and I'm going to give you five tips on how to make your introduction on a cold call really successful. It's really not rocket science, as I keep saying before, the, that, you know, sales is not rocket science, it's an art. And all you've got to do is be a great artist, all right? So the first question I have put down for this little video is, would you listen to you? And that's the question I want you to always ask yourself before and after a phone call that you make when it's a cold call. You've really got to think about the fact that we have, in, in, a, in cold calling, we have one of the best variables on our side. That is the fact that both you and the recipient is a human being, which actually means that you, you've already got a really good understanding of how you could come across to the other person because you'll have similar thoughts and feelings. Now, you might think, okay, yeah, but they're all different, everybody's different. Of course, everybody is different, but the primitive drivers that drive our like or dislike to somebody are actually the same. And because we've all, you know, evolved from similar backgrounds or the same backgrounds, and we've all evolved to survive. So if we take on board the flight or fight theory by the Harvard psychologist Walter Bradley Cannon, now in, night, in the night which he sort of founded or, or put together in the 1920s, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Fight or flight is when the, the, the real sort of reptilian brain in you kind of goes immediately to a new person. Is this person a threat to me or can I engage with them? And that's the same, so, you know, when you like or dislike somebody immediately, it's based on those same primitive theories. Now, the theory obviously, you know, it, it, it's, it talks about survival in the sense of um, animalistic survival, but you can apply it to this because what this is about is it's about what drives somebody to put the phone down on you straight away. Well, it's simple. They don't like what you're saying. And if they don't like what you're saying, they're going to put the phone down. But if they do like what you're saying, they'll probably give you an inch or a, a, a minute or a really crucial few more seconds to speak a little bit further, which could help you to get in that door. Now, that is really, really important. So, you know, you've got to really think about what is your opening line? How does it come across? Do I put people's backs up or am I allowing the person to become more comfortable with me and therefore engage with me more? It's not a long time, is it? I know, but I'm talking about, you know, really bad calls like, I tell you, I'll give you some examples. I've had people calling me saying things like, Madam, your computer has a virus and, and we need to fix it. It could be um, catastrophic for your IT. And the first thing I think is go away because I don't like what that person's saying. That person's bringing a threat to me. Why would I want to speak to them? The other example of it is, oh, you're eligible, um, oh, we've just pulled up the database and you're eligible for blah, blah, blah. What do you mean I'm eligible? Don't come here and tell me I'm eligible. That's not your place to tell me whether I'm eligible or not. You don't even know me. So, you know, that gets my back up. And, and you might have your own pet hates on cold callers, but those are two of mine. And they're real typical examples of how I become defensive when somebody calls me like that. Here's what I do. I'll try to say, stay professional, but what will usually happen is I will say to them, why am I eligible? Under what conditions am I eligible? And they won't be able to answer it. And I'll say, okay, look, I might give you a few minutes if I'm in a good mood. And I may not if I'm in a bad mood. 
Same with the virus protector thing. I'm either going to give them time or I'm not going to give them time because the other thing to consider is what kind of mood that other person could be in. You've got to be open-minded about the fact that they could be stressed, they could be inundated with workload, you know, they could have just had an argument, anything could have happened in their lives on that side, which might make them a little bit defensive to begin with. So your job is really to make sure that your introduction doesn't in any way at all get somebody's back up. And you'll know if it gets your back up because the examples I just gave you about what gets my back up probably also irritates you. You may feel the same way as I do about those sorts of first lines. And that just goes to show how actually we all sim think similarly, you know, and you'll be the same as me. If you're not in a good mood, you're not going to give them any more time. If you are in a good mood, you might give them a little bit more time. So think about this carefully. It's really, really important. This whole fight or flight thing isn't, you know, it, it's not a case of you, you may just come across somebody, you know, that will accept that everybody says everybody will be driven by this fight or flight. So you've got to start thinking, am I causing a threat? Am I posing a threat to somebody? Or am I giving a person an opportunity to come into a comfortable zone with me? Now, it's also important to note that um, Cannon's theory uh, is really based on face-to-face -face interaction um, and face to face is great because you get a lot more from the other person as we already know from one you know from um previous learnings that most of our communication is done through body language but when you're on the phone you don't have that body language so we have now really got to think about the fact that every word and the way that those that word is put across is going to count because it's going to make up for the loss of body language which accounts for 55 percent of the way that you are perceived by the other person so what we've got to think about is how we manage and control both the tone and the words and i'll go through those each with you as to what i think would help you and then um, a few tips in terms of some exercises that maybe you could do to help you right so first of all let's talk about tone now, how many times have you got into a disagreement or conflict or argument or what, a dispute, whatever it might be, because of a misunderstanding of a word, not because of the word, but because the way the word or sentence was said? And that's what you've got to think about when you put your sentences or words across. It's very important the, that you recognize or are self-aware of how your tone comes across. And now I'm going to say to you something that you may not like very much, but I, I really think it, it helps. Ask your partner, your friend, your parents, your children to listen to one of your calls and ask them how they think they would have received the same call. And I'm just talking about that first bit, the introduction. Record your calls. You listen back to them. You listen to them, let somebody else listen to them, gather the feedback and think about how you might be managing your tone or how you could better manage your tone. There is no better self-development than when you can step out of yourself and listen to yourself or observe yourself in what you're doing. And this is a great way of doing it. I know recording yourself isn't great, not a lot of people like it, but just do it for this exercise. Trust me, you will you will actually learn something from it if you haven't already done it okay the other thing that i would suggest is then think about these things while you listen to that call back think about this are you too fast how fast is your pace uh, quite often when i get cold calls the first bit of somebody's call which might be hi i'm calling from blah, 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 tends to go like that and that immediately makes me think why are they saying that so fast so i can't hear it they don't want me to hear that so again these are all the thoughts that can go through somebody's head and they might start thinking hmm i'm not sure about this person because i didn't hear a word of who they are and where they're from i'm not sure i want to speak to them so think about the pace at which you're saying i know a hurried a slightly hurried pace comes across as excited but you can't be that excited straight away on your introduction. In that first line or two, you've got to make it really clear. Hi, my name is, I'm calling for, you know, whatever accent that you speak in, it doesn't matter. That pace has got to be a pace at which the other person can understand you. So long as they can understand you, 
set the pace. You set the pace. I'm not saying to you it's got to be a, 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 you know, a, a, so many uh, words per minute or whatever. That, that's up to you. Listen to yourself, okay? See how you come across. See how clear you come across. Clarity is really, really important. Volume. Are you a mumbler? Think about that when you listen to yourself. If you're a mumbler, change it. Start to think about um, pronouncing your words a little bit or enunciation, how you're coming across and just put a little bit of umph into your words. And I'm not saying shout at people, I'm just saying make it so that they can hear what you're saying. You know, a lot of people sometimes are on the road, they could be in a busy office, it could be anywhere, so you really have got to check that the other person can hear you. There's nothing wrong with saying, can you hear me okay, because there's, um, my last call was a bit muffled, so please let me know if you can't. And that does help, that really does help, I find it helps. So to help you with your tone and the way you come across on that first call is don't pump yourself up too much, okay. There's all this, I know there's so much rah about, come on, get pumped, get in there, make that call. And what happens is you go in and you, your adrenaline's rushing, your heart's racing, and the first thing you go, hi, and it really does come across all, all over the place. So I, what, what I would suggest is relax. To relax, do a bit of research, look at the company, think about what you could say, ha think about the questions that you're gonna ask, have them in front of you so that you can, in conversation, find out what you need to. What do I need to know from this customer? List it down and listen. You know what? A really good thing for you to do is to put listen on your page or on your screen or somewhere in front of you that you can see all the time so that you never forget to listen. It's a word. Is, is another one. Try to stay away from jargon. This is one of my pet hates again. I don't know if you're the same. I don't know if you've ever received phone calls from real technical people who literally just bombard you with lots of technical jargon and you're just kind of thinking, I'm sorry, I didn't even understand a word of what you've just said. I don't know why you're calling. I don't know who you... And then they tend to go on and say, well, I'm calling because I want to speak to you about... Da -da -da -da, and then the jargon starts again. So please, try to be careful about using jargon. What you remember is not everybody's in the same position of, as you. Not, ev not everybody knows what you know. And not everybody has experienced the level of jargon that you might have um, experienced. Especially if they're a gatekeeper. I mean, you know, is it no wonder they just say, no, we're not interested. Because they don't even understand a word you've just said. So, you know, let's let's try and keep it in simple language so that you can the other person can understand exactly what it is you're calling about. If you start hiding behind jargon, it really and I say hiding because it really does come across as hiding to the other person. To me, I feel other people hide behind jargon. Don't do that. Um, initialisms are another one. If you use something like SEO which is also jargon. But if you say SEO, I might consider that as an S-C-O. Okay, so be careful of jargon. The other thing that you should remember about the words that you use on a call, um, especially during your introduction, those first few words or that first line or so that you introduce yourself with, is that you should always always be prepared to end that introduction with a question to the person you're speaking to. Not in the middle of it, not at the beginning of it, but at the end of it. One thing that doesn't work is when you say, hi, my name is, how are you? I have said this before and I'll say it again. If you're calling me, I'm not gonna tell you how I am because you don't care how I am. The reality is you are, you're saying that because you're nervous and you're stalling for time and you're fumbling around and you're wasting my time. So stop asking me how I feel. I don't care whether you know me, whether you don't know me, I care about why you're calling. So my response to somebody who says, how are you today, is usually, I'm good, why are you calling? So straight away, what I have done there, before this person's even been able to pitch to me what they're pitching or introduce themselves properly, they immediately put on a back footer from me because I'm taking control of the call. Let me play it out. Hi, Shia, my name is Jonathan. I'm calling from... How are you today? My answer, I'm great, Jonathan. Why are you calling me? Because that's how it goes.
All right, so be careful of using that question right there. Um, wait till you've introduced yourself. Hi, I always say, hi, I'm Shia, I'm calling from Wise Me Up. We specialize in bespoke sales training. And then I give them a question, which is, where are you on your sales training? How are you on your, and that's an open question for them, inviting them to give me some information. Tell me whether I'm calling you at the right time. You know, give me something. Come on, help me out here. I'm calling you to, to try and, you know, get to a point where I can start to pitch something to you. But let me know where I stand here. That's my question after my introduction. Remember, an introduction is an introduction. It's not a sales pitch. Don't start selling straight away. Get to that end of that first line. Ask a question to understand where they're at. Once you understand where they're at, then you can move forward. And I don't mean ask about them because that's personal. Ask a question that, that is relevant to why you're calling, all right? And if you haven't got a question, then that's not good because you should have had a question because if you've listened to any of my videos previously, I have said have a list of qualifying questions. You can use any of those qualifying questions at the end of that sentence, okay? So there's some tips on words and tones that you can use to help you with your introduction to make a successful call calling introduction and now i'm going to give you five tips that will help you to make a better introduction altogether all right so the first one is relax when you're not under pressure to sell you are more likely to build a good rapport if you can build a good rapport you are more likely to sell no one is going to buy from you if they don't like the sound of you all right so number one relax number two prepare i've said this all the way through all the videos and i'll keep saying it again make sure you do your research to whatever extent that research is remember if you've done some research before make some notes so you don't have to keep doing the research but just have a quick update you know just make sure that you know what you know and you know what you need to know that's important and that's preparation all right, okay, so that was number two, prepare. Number three, don't be a know-all. So whilst I've said prepare and know what you know and know what you need to know, don't put that across on the phone call. Don't put across on the phone call that, oh, well, I know this and I know this about you because that tends to put other people's backs up as well. It's like, where did you get this information? Some of that information might be wrong, you see. What you're trying to do is ask questions related to what you know so you can get clarity and confirmation on what you know and fill the gaps on what you don't know okay so don't be a know-all that's my number three tip to you number four use simple layman's language don't overcomplicate it because the person on the other end may not understand your jargon or your initialisms and that might put them off and force them to want to end the call with you all right so that's number four keep it simple layman's terms number five Test your tone out on yourself, on your family, on your partner. Use the information that I gave you earlier to record yourself and really analyze how you're coming across based on all the things that I've shared with you today. I hope that this information has been helpful. Um, um, but, you know, like always, hey, give me a shout if you want some more help. Let me just go through those five tips again. First one is relax. Don't put yourself under pressure. It doesn't help. Number two, prepare. Make sure that you do know what you know. Number three, don't put that across like a know-all because that's, they don't like know-alls. Number four, keep it simple. Layman's terms. And five, tone. Make sure you're aware of how your tone puts your words across. Hey guys, I hope that's been helpful. Um, I have missed you. I'm sorry that it took a little while to put this video out, but I'm hoping that um, it has made up for it a little bit. And I will be back with you, of course, as always, with something new. In the meantime, if you have anything you want to ask me, please do. I'm here to help. This is my mission. My mission is to help us to get rid of the bad cold callers and put our raise the profile of professional cold calling so that people don't have their backs up as soon as they hear about it and so that people aren't frightened to make them either. Listen, if I don't speak to you before, then have a great Christmas and New Year. I'll probably put out a little Christmas video for you, as I normally do. Until then, bye-bye.